This is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I am here today to do my mid-year review. Um, I started this, actually I think it was this time last year that I did my first one of these. Basically, I like to do a quarterly review video on my channel. I'm not someone who gets through enough diamond paintings that I can really warrant a monthly review. I'd just be repeating myself constantly and not having a lot to show for it. But I do really enjoy review videos from other content creators. So my version is to do this every three months when I've got a few things to show you. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to very quickly review my finishes for this quarter. And by that I mean April through to the end of June. Um, but I, that's not the main focus of the video because I do put up post reviews of all my finishes. So there are more detailed videos for the, the finished ones that you can check out if you're interested. I'm just going to briefly look at them and, and do some highlights. The main focus of my video today is to look over what are my current whips, my works in progress, because um, they're the ones that you won't have seen since maybe I kitted them up. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to be doing today. So, First of all, my completed paintings, I actually only have two for this quarter, which is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, I've been working on a few others, so obviously I've been doing more diamond painting than just these two. And I know, I know, I know, it's, it's not a race, it's not a competition anyway, but for me, I like to get through a certain amount because I, I have a stash and I want to work through them and get on to new projects. Honestly, I just haven't had as much time for diamond painting the last couple of months. Um, since opening the Etsy shop, I, I just that obviously takes up a fair chunk of the time that I used to spend on diamond painting. Um, so yeah, it's it's all good. It's for good reasons. But yeah, I'm just adjusting to getting through slightly fewer than I may be used to. So my two finishes. First of all, I have... Butterflies in the garden. Let me get as much of that in frame as I can. Oh, <laughs> it's just about all in. So as I say, there is a separate post review for this if you want to check it out in more detail. I started this on the 30th of March and I finished it on the 4th of May. Um, I didn't work on it solidly through that time. I was switching back and forth with other projects. So it probably took me around three weeks or so of actual diamond painting time, uh, which is sort of fairly typical for me for one of this size. It's a square painting from Diamond Art Club and the artist is Joelle McIntyre. It's 76 by 56 centimetres and it is just stunning. I pulled this out because at the time I was feeling like I wanted to do something really seasonal and spring-like and this was the one out of the ones that I was really wanting to get to soon that really sung to me from that hymn sheet, you know, just the, the sort of the beautiful summery spring-like. Is it spring or is it summer? Make it your mind, cat. <laughs> But the, you know, the garden weather um, and the idea of just being out in the garden and having all these beautiful butterflies around. I really, really enjoyed this. So yeah, it's got the bright, vibrant colours that I always go for. And something that I discovered I really particularly enjoyed with this painting is all the sort of pictures within a picture. I like paintings like this where you get all these different butterflies and all these different flowers and they're like distinct pictures almost that you can work on and feel a sense of completion for each one and there were different parts of the painting that that felt really different to work on like there were the high confetti bits around here and then a lot of color blocking back there. I also have a real thing for paintings that depict this kind of um, summer blue sky and then the juxtaposition of things against that. I, I don't know how to describe what I mean, but I just really, really, really like the rendering of this archway against that blue, blue background. And I think it's rendered really beautifully. I'm looking at it in the viewfinder now and it has a really almost 3D effect. I think it was very well done. So yeah. That is Butterflies in the Garden. And then my other completion, which you've seen really quite recently on the channel, so again I'll be super quick with this one, is an evening stroll. 
It is another Diamond Art Club. Um, I'm trying to be unapologetic about the fact that most of the things you see on this channel are Diamond Art Club because I work on a lot of their diamond paintings. They are my, my one of my absolute favourite diamond painting shops. I try to get a bit of variety in there, but it's just this is what you're going to see on this channel because this is what I like to work on. So this one is round drills. It's a similar size, 71 by 56 centimetres, just ever so slightly smaller. And I started this one on the 17th of May and finished on the 10th of June. I worked straight through on this one, but I just, I, as I said, I didn't have that much time. So I'd go several days not doing much at all. But I did find that when I sat down to it, it worked out really quickly. Because I multi-place, I could whiz through a lot of these sections really quickly and it was it was satisfying, to be honest. <laughs> it was really nice to be able to make good progress every time I sat down to it. It's very, very sparkly, as uh, round drill paintings tend to be. Um, and I, d I didn't really have any complaints. I think I mentioned in the post review that I found the black drills were ever so slightly smaller than the other drills for some reason. I had a theory that possibly the black drills were from the second generation of, of Diamond Art Club round drill upgrades and the rest of the drills were from the first generation just based on the timing of when I bought it. That's just conjecture, I don't actually know that. But yeah, that was my one complaint that I remember. Sorry, I'm just spotting hairs. This is the problem with, with round paintings. I live in a house with a very, very furry cat who gets groomed all the time, but still emits just clouds of white fur everywhere. And they're just sort of in the atmosphere in my house. So whatever I do to protect my paintings, they always get on them. But yeah, so that was my only complaint was, well, Complaints too strong a word, but the only thing that I didn't enjoy as much was that just because when I was multi-placing with the black drills, it, it felt quite hard to kind of stretch the drills into place. It was like the grid fit the bigger the bigger round drills perfectly, but not so much the smaller ones. And yeah, this inspired me to buy another painting by this artist, which I think is a really solid recommendation for the work. I think Deborah Malcolm's art really lends itself beautifully to diamond painting um, and particularly to Diamond Art Club's rendering style. But she does have some paintings um, licensed elsewhere, which I do mean to check out if I can find a way to access them at a reasonable cost because, you know, shipping from international companies. Anyway, I digress. It's a lovely painting. I look forward to doing more of her artwork in diamond painting form. So those are my two completions. And now I'm gonna have a look at my whips. Right, I have three works in progress, three on ongoing projects to show you today. Um, so the first one of these I'm actually quite likely to finish in the next couple of days because it's the one I'm working on at the moment and I only have a little bit left to do. Um, so it would probably actually be another finish for this quarter. If I'm filming this on, on the 28th of June because I don't have another chance before this is going to go up on Friday. Um, so yeah, this is a kind of in-between one. <laughs> so expect to post review on this one soon. And this is Cletus. Cletus Early Bird, a Richard Lorenz painting from Diamond Art Club. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. What can I say? I just, I love Richard Lorenz paintings. I have, I think, four. So I've completed Family Circus. I'll soon have this one. I've got um, Next to You and I have got Floyd the Fabulous Fish Whisperer. And there are lots more that I really like and would like to have. I try not to let myself um, feel like I need to have every painting by a particular artist just because I don't want my funds to be kind of committed. <laughs> if you like, you know, feel like I have to buy this painting that's coming out, even if it isn't my favorite by the artist. Um, because I'm, I'm enough of a collector as it is. I think all of us doing this hobby tend towards being collectors, don't we? And that's just, that's one boundary I set for myself to try and keep things under control. Because, you know, I already collect all the diamond paintings, all the pens, all the trays, all the other accessories. I've got to find limits somewhere. But all power to those of you that do do that. I'm very jealous of the people that have got every Richard Lorenz painting because they are so much fun. So I started this painting on the 12th of June. 
I picked it out of my stash because I had just finished an evening stroll which was like really bright colours and I thought that was a good time to do one like this where I really love the image obviously because I bought it and there are some bright colours in it but if you know me and the things I, I chat about on this channel at all I'm often talking about how bright colours really make time painting for me and I struggle a bit more with a muted colour palette because I can just get a little bit bored. So this one has obviously got a lot of sort of beige and brown in the background and I just thought that it was a good time to pull this one out when I'm just off the back of a really bright one so I've had my fix. But also it is pretty small, it's 42.8 by 55.8 centimetres which like in, in the context of uh, licensed artwork that I'm painting companies that tend to produce quite big paintings, it's it's a baby one for me. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying that it's, it's working up quite quickly. And although I haven't had much time to work on it, I'm actually surprised looking at the dates that I started it as long as ago as the 12th and it's the 16th and I'm not finished yet because it feels like it's working up really quickly. Anyway... Um, I came to this straight off the back of a round painting and I did feel like I needed a slight period of adjustment this time to get used to Diamond Art Club's very, very tight fitting square drills. Um, I love that. I absolutely love their tight fitting square drills. I just needed to kind of, you know, adjust how I was multi-placing and so on. But yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it as soon as I got back into it. It was brilliant. There's lots of colour blocking around the outside, so it has worked out reasonably quickly when I've had a chance to work on it, which is great. Um, some colours are running a bit low as I'm getting towards the end. You'll see in the post review if I had enough to finish. I, I think I probably will have enough to get through all of it. It might be a bit tight on a few colours, and one of the reasons for that is that all of the shades of brown, well, not necessarily all of them, but a lot of them have felt like they were just a bit more prone to trash um, than I maybe expect from Diamond Art Club. Nothing terrible, but when they're colours that you want to multi-place, you just, you really need them to be perfect, to line up in the tray. And there were a few that just, yeah, I've had to trash quite a few more drills and I'm hoping that doesn't mean I'll run out. The other thing I thought I'd briefly mention is that, I don't know if I've got any colours where it's really obvious, but some of these beige colours in the background, um, the grid lines, because they're sort of, the grid lines are a white colour and some of the beiges are very faint. There's been sections where it's been a little bit hard to see the grid lines around the symbol. Now I think I've worked past all of those because I think this colour, this, this, um, horizontal line that was the worst defender in it doesn't look like I've got any more color blocking sections for that so yeah overall I have really enjoyed it I absolutely adore his grumpy little face <laughs> I think he's so cute um, yeah and he is he the early bird or is he the early bird but I, I don't know they're catching that worm <laughs> so yeah I, I do love Richard Lorenz's artwork and his sense of just fun that comes through in it Looking forward to having this one done in the next couple of days. Next up is my longest running whip because I started this on the 23rd of March and I'm only around halfway done. It is not a reflection on the painting, it's, it's a reflection on me. So, this painting is called Gingerbread House. You can see there the section that I've done. And let me just show you the top section that I haven't got to yet. So this painting is absolutely just so much fun and so me. Um, and I'm really glad I picked it up because Diamond Art Studio, who are the, uh, the vendors of this particular painting, let me show you their logo at the top there. Um, they actually discontinued this one. Um, I'm not sure why. I know it was around the same sort of time as they moved to um, only having specifically licensed artists work, whereas this was a Shutterstock image, I believe. So images that can be used without infringing on copyright. Um, so you're not treading on anyone's toes, but you're not actually recompensing a particular artist, if I understand it correctly, which I may not. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had this painting in two sizes and I picked it up in about March of last year. So I'm very glad I have it. 
It has been a lot of fun. The only reason it's taking me a while and I'm having to do it in small chunks is just that I have not been in the mood for working on heavy confetti pieces as much in recent months. I, I like a mixture of the two and I always have. Well, actually, that's not really true. In the early days of dime painting, when I single placed all the time, I really liked high confetti pieces and switching between colours. But then as I've got more and more proficient at multi-placing and I guess more used to how quickly something goes if you're multi-placing, I just find confetti a little bit more wearing. Um, and this image, as you can probably see here, is, it's pretty heavy confetti. Let me bring some up to show you. So you can, you can make it out probably in here all the different bits of shading and stuff and it's beautifully done i think the rendering is fabulous and it's well worth that effort of confetti um it's just yeah something that i take in small doses because i would prefer to do a row put it away come back to it in a few weeks when i feel ready to tackle confetti again rather than plow on and burn out and then have unfairly negative feelings towards um a particular diamond painting or a particular company uh, when you know it's not their fault that I wasn't in the mood for confetti <laughs> so yeah I have been really enjoying it I have a few diamond art studio paintings in my stash I have a stash video actually that I put up right at the start of this month if anyone wants to go check that out and see more of what I have um, and I highly, highly rate them. Um, it's the first one that I've actually worked on from them, but they're the kind of company that I just, I knew from the reviews and from how they conduct themselves that, you know, I was going to love them when I got to them. Um, so yeah, absolutely highly recommend them. It's very good quality, um, but actually this canvas is the older style canvas and they have recently upgraded it. So if you bought one from them now and it was recent stock, it, it would be slightly different to this. Not that I have any problem with this. Um, yeah, and I was really impressed with the quality. Like the diamonds fit together really nicely. I think this lower section, they've probably shrunk in a little bit and they're fitting even neater than when I laid them. Um, so yeah, it's been a very good experience. I got the smaller of the two sizes that they had available, which is 50 by 75 centimeters, I believe. And I think they also had one that was more like 90 or 70, 90 by 70. As I said, they don't have either anymore. In retrospect, maybe I would have been better off getting the bigger one because it would have smoothed out some of the confetti. Because obviously the smaller the image you have, the more pixelation there naturally is. But then, you know, swings and roundabouts, it would have taken me longer because it was a bigger painting. And the second half that I'm now on, which I'm going to be coming back to this in a couple of days when I finish Cletus, you can see there's actually a lot of colour blocking in this top section. I'm hoping that will go okay. I did find when I did this section here, um, it just, it was a little slower than I'm used to for colour blocking because their drills fit together differently to how I'm used to because I do so many Dime Dark Club paintings. It was just, just having to adjust how I multi-place them. You know, I just needed to space them out a little bit more. And that was frustrating just because I'm impatient, but they actually were good drills fitting well together, if that makes sense. It's just the, the trade-off when I've allowed myself to get so used to and so comfortable to it the way one company does things. But again, not a reflection of the painting. So yeah, I really look forward to doing more from this company. They're, it's, um, they're bringing out new artwork all the time um, and I am following them with anticipation. So yeah, looking forward to getting this one done, hopefully this quarter. And then the last of my whips is another one that I've had going for a long time for a different reason in this case. So I started this one on 25th of March and it is Hugs for Hiccup by Dakota Dightweiler at Diamond Art Club. 42.6 by 42.6 centimetres. Normally a painting I'd have got through quite quickly, but as you can see, I've been doing this one a little differently. So um, as well as this YouTube channel, I also have Instagram and TikTok accounts. And I've been doing this one as a pick a number series on TikTok. Um, so if you don't know what I mean by that, I do a section and then I put a video up and say, pick a number and people say what number they want to see me work on next. And then I pick one of those and then I work on it. So 
it's taken me a while because I need to be set up to film to work on it and then I'll do you know a couple of sections um, and then once I have done that I tend to put it away and then maybe not get it out again for another week or so so what am I am I halfway maybe not quite I do want to get this one done. I need to put a bit more work into it, I think, um, and just not be lazy about having to set up to record. I think the thing that has slowed me down a lot is that I chose the wrong painting for it, basically. I'd never done it before. I thought this painting would be small enough. It's actually quite a large painting to do for a project like that, and particularly for the size of the sections that I've set up. If I'd done bigger sections, it would have worked better. I don't know. As you can see, I got to 54 sections and that's quite a lot. <laughs> and what it also means is I'm working on a very small section at a time and that slows everything down because it's sort of, um, it, it changes the timings of the piece to it being a really high confetti piece. Um, and actually some of it is quite high in confetti, but there's a lot of times where I'm doing a colour and if I was doing, you know, a section this big or a section this big, I'd be carrying on with that colour and it would feel less bitty. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. <laughs> but I absolutely love the image that's coming out and I do find it really fun seeing it emerge from behind the release papers. Um, and it's the colours, the colours are beautiful. I love the tealy, bluey, purple sections. And then the yellowy, orangey sections um, are also really nice. So yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. I just, I need to get on with it a bit more often. Um, stop being lazy, really. Because <laughs> that's what it comes down to. In fact, I'm going to work on it today. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> So that is my mid-year review done. Not too many to go over this time. Um, last year there were a few of these where I had a lot of whips on the go and I am trying not to have too many on the go these days. Um, I don't know. I just go with how I feel it during the year really. You know, if I'm enjoying a piece and I want to carry on working on it, then I do. I don't switch up for the sake of it. But equally, if I'm finding that I'm a little bored or needing breaks or burnt out of the pieces that I have, I will start up a new one. So who knows by the time I next do one of these, what I'll be up to. So my goal for this next quarter would be definitely to get all three of these finished. And then what else can I do? It's going to incorporate the summer holidays when my son's home and when we're away. Um, and I also need to be more realistic with my time now with the Etsy shop and, and needing to make sure that I set aside enough time for making putties during the week. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely hope to get all of these done and at least a couple more this quarter. I'm leaning towards starting one of my bigger pieces from my stash next, um, one of the big beastie ones that are sort of 70 by 98 or whatever, um, and then doing a good chunk of that. And then when I inevitably feel like I want a little break and wanting to do something else, pulling out a smaller one that I can whiz through and then going back and forth like that. That's feeling like a good plan to me at the moment, but I will see because as I say, I, I do this by feel. I don't like to plan too far in advance. I see other people do that. Um, I have a friend who knows what her next painting is going to be and her next painting after that and so on. And that really works for her. And I'm kind of like in awe and envy that she can plan it out like that. But for me, I tend to not really choose beyond my next painting because if I, if I decide on a certain one and then actually when it comes to it, I don't feel that so much, then it, it will just spoil things a little bit for me. All our brains work differently, don't they? <laughs> So yeah, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing and I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye.